welcome to levealittlehigher.com. This week we continue learning uh, Hobot, Halevavot, the book by, by Rabbi Bahia, Ibn Pakuda, in which we're learning the gate of self-accounting. And today, Rabbi Pakuda says, a person should make an accounting with himself when he feels love, attachment, and yearning for one who he thinks has a similar feeling towards him, as it is written in Mishlei, as in water, face answers to face, so the heart of man to man. So Mishlei, it says that as water reflects a face, like we are all mirrors of each other. So if you find someone that's smiling at you and is nice to you, it's because that's the way that perce person perceives you too. And um, so his regard for his friend is likely to be even higher if his friend is a notable or a lord. Like, you know, when you have an important friend, he's the, the vice president of a company or he's the president of a country or he's a lord or a queen, you know, then you're going to have like a big regard for this person. And even more, you're going to feel more love towards this person if this person shows kindness to you but he doesn't need anything from you. When people do things for you with no agenda, no personal gain, they're doing because they are just loving people and they love you and they want the best for you, then even more, you're gonna feel more attachment towards this person and more love towards this person. So now, if we would go to such lengths for a fellow creature, a mere mortal, how much greater is our obligation to our creator? May he be exalted. Like imagine, if you are one of these lucky people in the world, these blessed people who happen to have someone in your life that is altruistic towards you, who has no personal agenda, who is kind to you regardless whatever, if one day you are, you wake up with a bad mood and you're not the nicest person, but nevertheless, this person is always there for you and is always loving towards you and is always there to help you. How much more do we need to, 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 to feel the love towards Hashem who is constantly giving us and loving us and, and blessing us, even if we don't deserve it. So it is not because you are more numerous than all the nations that God cherishes you and chose you. Rather, it is because God loves you. This is in Devarim. So besides this assurance to us, we have, we have seen signs present and past of his love for us and his help to us and how he has drawn us near and promised to stand by us in every generation. We, we just came out from Shavuot, from Matan Torah, from receiving the Torah. And uh, we came from Pesach, and we heard all the story of the Exodus and how Hashem took us out of Egypt with the outstretched arm. He took us out, and uh, he, he saved us from drowning in the sea. He parted the sea for us, and he fed us in the desert with manna. And he had us with the clouds of glory taking care of us, and, the, and Miriam's well giving us water for 40 years. And we see how Hashem really takes care of us with no agenda. And it's only because he loves us. And so Ezra said, though we are servants, our God has not abandoned us in our servitude. And to complete this reflection, we add what is apparent to all of us. If one had been a friend of our fathers and forefathers, like imagine if you were friends with Abraham Avinu, we are bound to show him gratitude for his friendship by honoring and loving him. As the wise one said, the wise one is King Solomon, your friend and your father's friends do not forsake. So in Mishle, he says it in Mishle. The creator, may he be exalted, reminds us of his covenant with our fathers and his providence over us for their sake to keep his covenant with them, as he said, because he is keeping the oath that he swore to our fathers. So Hashem made a promise to our forefathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, that he would take care of the Jewish people forever. Um, and we have to stand by this, that Hashem has kept his promise. Uh, we've, we've been here in this world for I don't know how many thousands of years, we have endured two destructions of two temples. Uh, 
exile, persecutions, uh, inquisitions, holocaust, crusades, pogroms, anti-Semitism, terrorism, you name it. And nevertheless, Hashem has kept us here. He has kept his word. So how coarse is our nature, how stiff-necked we are, how small is our faith, how stubbornly we resist the truth. Why do we resist the truth? Why is it so hard for a Jew to connect to his essence, to keep Torah and mitzvot? The whole Jewish world should be learning Torah and the whole Jewish world should be keeping the mitzvahs. But no, we resist it. So of God's love for our fathers and forefathers, we are not mindful because people don't learn and people don't know. They're not thinking about these things. So for the Creator's love for us and providence over us, we show no gratitude. People are not, they don't recognize how Hashem has really taken care of them through eternity. So in return for His great kindness and many graces towards us, we do not listen that He created us and gently guides us, leaves us unbashed. So awake, my brother, in the words of Rabbi Takuda, awake, my brother, from this stupor and, and remove the curtain that is woven of your, over your heart by your evil inclination. It says it's your evil inclination, which interposes between you and the light of your intellect. Your, your yetzer hara, your ego, your ego, your evil inclination is what doesn't allow the light of truth to come into your heart. Uh, intellectually, maybe you, you get it, but it doesn't allow it to come in. And so he explains, it's like a web, like a spider spins its web over the window of a house. The first layer, okay, you can see the sun, you can see the light, but once the, 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 the spider keeps spinning and, and spinning this web, suddenly the web is so thick that no light can come through the window into the house. There's no sunlight cannot reach the house. So he says, Rabbi Bakuda, this is the same with the evil inclination. It's the same. First, it's a thin veil. It's a very thin uh, web. And then some light can come in. But suddenly, you go and you do more evil, and you do more evil, and you do more evil. You Evil in the words of the Torah means that you don't keep Hashem's desires, you don't keep Hashem's will, you keep your will, and the more you go against God and you do what you desire that goes against Hashem's desires, the more this web is going to become thicker and thicker and thicker to the point that you're not going to be able to receive the, the divine light. It's going to be blocked. But if you take it lightly and ignore it, its work will intensify. It will deprive you of the light of your intellect, and it will be difficult to dismiss from your mind. Therefore, hasten to save yourself and enlist God's support in driving off the evil inclination. Work hard, exert yourself. You will then be illuminated with the light of wisdom and see the truth of things with your mind's eye. And so our early masters have drawn from scripture various metaphors on this. One is one day a traveler came to the rich man and he was low to take off his own flock or cattle to prepare for the guest who had come to him. Instead, he took the poor man's lamp and prepared it for the man who had come to him. So imagine you go and visit a, a friend, uh, you're a traveler and you come to this house and, they, and you were coming with, with, with some food in your bag and the, and the person in the house is gonna serve you food and suddenly he takes your food and he serves it to you. So at first, if the evil inclination is called a traveler, then it's called the guest, and finally it's called the man. And so the lord of the house ends up uh, uh, falling into this. So it says, happy is the man who walks not in the, court, in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scoffers. At first, a person walks, then he stands, and finally he sits. Uh, my father-in-law, he always says, first you give your hand, then they take your elbow, and at the end they take your shoulder. That's how it is. This is how the evil inclination works. It's machia machiavellic. It takes first your hand, and then suddenly it's up to here. He doesn't stop. And then in Mishle, it says, evil men do not understand judgment, but those who seek God will understand all things. And in the parasha class, 
of this week, NASO. This is exactly what we're talking about, about doing good, that we have to like focus on doing good. Like forget, don't go so much into your ego about your refinement and your um, uh, being a better person and, and refining yourself. Go more into what needs to be done. How can I be of service in this world? What needs, what Hashem needs me today for? And just go and do it. Don't think so much. Because once you start thinking so much, the, the Yetzer Hara gets involved. He gets in there. He knows how to get into, into, your, into, your, into your intellect and uh, block your light. So I wish you a blessed week and remember, live a little higher. Thank you.